For over 2,000 years, man has been searching for the final resting place of Noah's Ark. Though there have been many attempts, few have been able to fully explore the one place specifically noted in the Bible, Mount Ararat, located in eastern Turkey. Well, now there's a movie-length documentary out about a recent expedition for the biggest archaeological find in history. Take a look at the trailer. I found an anomaly on Mount Ararat. It's definitely a man-made object. How it got there, I don't know, and that's not for me to find out. It's for whoever goes up there and does it. We're on our way. We see it in every culture. The flood was a common story told, and there was an ark that saved humankind. I think the Ark of Noah would be the ultimate archaeological find. This is not a normal part of the world. This is a hostile part of the world. We had the PKK. We have the Turkish army. Needless to say, they don't like one another. If we don't go, we won't know. Somebody has to take up the challenge. Let's go find an Ark. I think there's so much evidence that it's irresponsible not to look. I've had my worst nights in my life on that mountain. I've frozen on a mountain. I've been bloody on that mountain. The air is much thinner. Breathing is hard. We knew we were on the brink of what could be the greatest archaeological discovery so far. We will either prove that yes, it is here, or no, it is not. And joining us now is director, producer Brent Baum to talk about the movie Finding Noah and the film crew's experience following the explorers on their perilous trek up Mount Ararat. Well, Brent, what inspired you to take on this challenge of documenting these explorers searching for Noah's Ark? Hi, Wendy. <laughs> Such a pleasure to be here. You know, it's it's uh, it's an interesting story, the making of the film itself. But, you know, as a child, I grew up in Sunday school hearing about Noah's Ark. And as life goes on, you, you hear all these tabloid stories. You know, they found Noah's Ark somewhere, you know, and and I always wondered, is that is that true? And when this opportunity came up to film this scientific expedition on the top of Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey, I just couldn't say no. Well, the the scenery is breathtaking, and it's, uh, you know, you're 17,000 feet up in the air, very cold, obviously, from the pictures. I mean, what was it like shooting? And you've got those, uh, I don't know, what do you call them, cre crevasses, you know, uh, very it looks very dangerous. It, exactly. You know, it's it's not something that normally a Hollywood film crew prepares for. It's, <laughs> you know, it's it's a logistical nightmare to do a movie anywhere in the world. And when you compound that with the fact that you're at 17,000 feet, that you're in a in an area of the world that can only be described as a war zone. So the hostilities mm -hmm. between the Kurds and the Turks, they're in a constant state of war. And so to to prep for that was just no ordinary task. And looking back, it's I see that in all of the people that we hired, there there was the hand of God working mm -hmm. in the preparation for this movie. And it, you can't just, for example, hire a camera operator or a sound technician because these guys also need to have mountain experience. <laughs> they need to be able to survive on the top of a mountain. And so we were blessed with an incredible crew that could help us document this journey at all stages. I'm so jealous. I wish I could have been up there with you, maybe <laughs> next time. Well, you know, the uh, did you have any problem yourself at the altitude? You know, for me, the most difficult part was getting to, to the first camp. You know, you don't you don't summit a mountain in one day. In fact, you have to acclimate. And so what happens is that we spend time at different levels of the mountain as we're going up. And, and for me, it was getting to that first location was probably the most difficult. And I was blessed the rest of the way that the altitude didn't really affect me. But 60% of our film crew didn't make it to the summit. 
Mm. And it was a similar number with the excursion team. They also didn't make it up to the summit. And so we had to plan for this along the way. I knew that I would want camera operators and sound people at all of the camps along the way. So when we had the attrition, when, when someone just couldn't go any further because of altitude sickness or, for example, one guy hurt his knee, then we could have them stay at one of the lower camps and they could still work and still accomplish what we needed to get done. Interesting. So the very top is 17,000 or is it higher at the top at the summit? The, the summit is 17,000 feet, but we were on the eastern plateau, which was just about 100 feet less than that off about a mile to the east. And what people, it, it you really don't understand what life is like until you've been up there. You know, we tried to prepare for this. We, we climbed Mount Whitney here in California, and we went to Pikes Peak in Colorado, and we climbed there for practice climbs. But that's nothing. Th those peaks were only as high as one of our camps along the way to the <laughs> summit of Mount Ararat. Hey, well, at, least you, at least you did uh, train a little bit. Uh, well, let me ask yeah. you, the explorers, you guys were digging at the very top, as you said, uh, and this was based on some eyewitness accounts um, as well as some um, some other uh, expeditions where they believe that they hit wood during a previous dig up there, if I'm getting my facts right. Um, but what did you discover this time? Well, you know, this is this was the biggest question going into this. In fact, at the very beginning, the investors said to me, they said, Brent, what if you don't find the ark? And I said, the film can't be about finding a piece of wood. Yeah. If, that's, if that's the case, we've lost from the beginning. The film has to be about the men who go and search for the ark. Mm. And that's the magic that we've been able to put into this film. You, know, you mentioned all of these other finds and these sightings. There's an immense amount of lore and history and local legends surrounding the ark. It, it even goes back to historians like Barossus, who wrote of the ark in the in the mountains of Ararat. Marco Polo writes of seeing the ark in, in the snows of Mount Ararat. And so when you combine all of this together and you talk about shepherd boys who saw the ark in a record snow melt or pilots who've flown over the mountain and seen something there, there's a massive amount of intrigue and history behind this. And so we have to incorporate that into the film, but also get to the point of this modern expedition where these men have been using satellite technology and ground penetrating radar to narrow down the focus of the search onto this eastern plateau region of Mount Ararat. Well, let me ask you, why is the quest to find Noah's Ark so important and what would it mean to the world if we actually do find it? Well, I think it would have a profound effect on the world but but it's you know this is something that we could debate on another show for hours right <laughs> the 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 concept of faith and whether or not seeing an ark is an integral part of a person's faith and and for me personally it wouldn't ever matter if we found the ark but i truly believe that god wants us to search for these kind of things it's not necessarily in the finding but in the search and this is a very important distinction. And, and it leads to what the film is really about, Wendy. If, if we had called the film In Search of Noah's Ark, it would be like, well, when you find the ark, you find a piece of wood. Huh. But the, me the meaning is much deeper than that. It's called Finding Noah because Noah brought forth an opportunity, a new restart for humanity. And so when we look at it from the biblical context, a lot of these men who explore and look for Noah's Ark actually have a chance to restart themselves. There, there's an increase in faith that occurs when you go on these type of excursions. There's an increase in brotherhood and love that occurs when you go on these type of excursions. The beautiful thing for me and what I want audiences across America to see is into the hearts of these very courageous men who risk their life in a very, very dangerous part of the world and on top of that mountain because of their faith. Mm -hmm. And when you get a glimpse into the hearts of these men, you'll understand why we call it Finding Noah. I love what you said. It's not in the finding, but it's in the searching. That's very profound. Well, the documentary airs in theaters for one night only, October 8th. Uh, why one night only? Well, we, we were fortunate, actually. Uh, it's 
the documentary is being put out by Fathom Events, and it's kind of a new strategy. Typically, a documentary might get 50 screens in some of the large cities in America, but we wanted to take it to the people. And Fathom Events provided an opportunity for us to do that. So we get 640 screens across the country, and that's that's the kind of reach that we want. I, I want everybody to see the story of these men. I, I, the, they're common guys. Hmm. You know, they're, they're guys from Arkansas and Michigan and Washington and Montana and Texas. They're pastors, they're geologists, they're scientists, they're school teachers, they're normal guys. But they step out of their normal life and they risk everything for their faith. And that's, that's a story that people should hear in Hollywood. We don't get to tell that story enough. Right. I, mm-hmm. I've made I've made horror movies and romantic comedies and espionage thrillers. And and yet when you have an opportunity to show real people, men of faith in action, Hollywood typically says we're not interested in that. Mm-hmm. And so we had an opportunity to see this. And I can't wait for you to see it. And I'm thankful that the people at Fathom Events got behind this and put it on so many screens. Absolutely. Well, how can, if people can't make it to the theater tomorrow night or tomorrow, um, how can they see it, Brent? Well, there are there all there are going to be alternative options for this, like like any movie. But what we want to do is we want to push the Fathom event because if we get a lot of people in the theater on Thursday night, Fathom will show it again. Mm. And that's the goal. We want Fathom to, we want people out there to say, wait a minute, Hollywood can make a real movie about men of faith. And by the way, these are cool guys. <laughs> I mean, they, they are they are incredible guys. There's one guy who's single, and I said our movie is going to do more for you. Christian Mingle will blow up because of you. Okay, <laughs> and so so you know this is the kind uh, of what's thing. What's his name, I, Brent? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. His name is Kevin DeVries. I'll tell you right now. And <laughs> what a wonderful man that guy has the heart of a lion. And and these are the men I want to share with America. And so, you know, what we need to do is we need to let Hollywood know that people of faith can support a real life story. It doesn't have to be a drama, right? Mm. It doesn't have to be fiction. It's a real life story about real guys and we can support this. Get people out to see the movie. Fathom will keep it on screens. And then, you know, subsequently down the line, when the movie typically goes into its DVD window or its digital window, it will be available that way as well. Hey, sometimes real life is the best you can get. So, uh, well, and, and not only that, but when you look at the visuals here and when you see the place that we are, you want to see this movie on the big screen. When those guys go down into that crevasse or they rope, they rope over the Ahura Gorge, which, by the way, is a 4,000 foot drop. Wow. A lot of people, they think, well, you're on the top of a mountain. That's all right. But this excursion is taking place on a glacier that's sliding off into the Ahura Gorge, <laughs> which is twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. And when they start digging and drilling, I'm sitting there with the camera guys and I'm saying, let's not be on the outside of this drill, right? <laughs> because it's like, guys, you're drilling into an ice cap. What if it cracks and goes off the edge? Well, the trailer was thrilling to watch. Definitely breathtaking. We're glad everybody is okay. And uh, it, we wish you all the best success um, for this um, this documentary tomorrow. Brent Baum, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it's, it. It's certainly my pleasure. Thank you for having me.